These savages are eating. They're beginning to feast on the cacarus of the economy. And let me explain to you in deep dive detail what the great wealth transfer is. Right now, all of cryptocurrency is down 50 or more percent. So someone bought cryptocurrency when it was $68,000. And then they, they bought it from someone. That is part and parcel of the great wealth transfer. For the wealth transfer to occur, someone's got to lose, someone's got to win. So the people who sold their Bitcoin at $68,000, they won. Now the people, once again, just to be 100% clear, if you have Bitcoin and you're holding on, there's a chance it could come back. So technically you haven't locked in those losses. But once you sell your cryptocurrency, which a lot of people who bought at 68,000 and they sold at 20, they lost $48,000. See, once again, for the great wealth transfer to work, someone's got to win, someone's got to lose. And right now, the savages, the economic savages are beginning to feast. I've been watching the housing market and it's been very, very interesting because the housing market behavior is location based. California, Salt Lake City, Denver, all of these housing markets are now down. And this is where the greatest appreciation occurred. So that makes sense. Who is going to eat the real estate bones? These will be the people. And mark my words, you don't think it's coming, but we have some baked in catastrophe coming. We had a bunch of people who entered the forbearance program. And a lot of these people, and I, I have I know real estate investors, because the real the force, you know, a lot of people are saying that they were just going to tack on the missed payments to the end of the mortgage. That didn't happen. So we have a looming foreclosure crisis that's probably going to start popping off in 2023. So these houses, which will go into foreclosure, which will be snapped up more than likely by corporate America, because corporate America bought 80,000 houses to rent out. This is wall street, but these houses are about to go on fire sale. Now, will we have a repeat of what we had in 2008, 9, and 10? I don't think so. But certain marketplaces will have similar pricing catastrophes because there are some places where prices are still going up. And there are some places that prices never really went up and they're still easy to afford. But once again, for the economic savages to feast, someone's got to lose. All right, get in the intellectual property school. Let me just say it. I'm gonna teach you guys things that you don't know, things that you can Google, because other than Sonny Linaduzeri, Sonny has a course that is teaching part of what I do. It's like $6,000. And a lot of people who have taken the course have been very, very successful, which is why I feel very confident about the intellectual property school, because Sonny is just dealing with one aspect. I am dealing with a lot more. I have made a million dollars from writing a book. I have made millions of dollars from online courses, and this was using YouTube. I'm going to teach you how to do the same thing on a different level. I am not going to make some wild claim that, yeah, hey, yeah, you take this course in six months, you'll be making two million a year. That's unlikely. But what is likely is you could be making five to $15,000, 12 to 24 months in the future. That's more doable. And that's something I feel pretty secure in saying if you are a completely raw, naked rookie. And one of the things we're going to get ready to do um, probably next week, 
I'm going to start having challenges in organic money, which is the school for the intellectual property school. So that's where I'll be answering questions because some stuff went in the other day and I had to answer it. And what we're going to have are live trainings once to twice a week. And I need to say this, this will not be on the weekends anymore. Um, this weekend, I'll share something with you. Uh, this weekend, I realized I haven't taken a day off and I can't remember. I could not remember the last time that I took a, a complete full day off. And Saturday and Sunday, I did not step foot in this office. I completely took it off and I feel recharged and energized. So going forward, I'm gonna start taking more time off because you know I was really working on a lot of stuff. And I just think you really need to keep track of not taking days off because you know that's just kind of my personality. But I'm going to include rest and relaxation in the course because here's the thing. Do you understand that the average online creator only has a five to seven year lifespan? because they don't take breaks and they don't renew themselves. I've been doing this 15, 14 years, almost three times as long as the average content creator. You wanna know why? Because there's a strategy that I'm gonna teach you. So go below, it's gonna be in the first comment or it'll be in the description and you can go ahead and get your promo codes and get in before July 31st. Go ahead, take action and get into the Intellectual Property School today. And I'm gonna put this statement out there. I'm not excited or happy to see someone crash and burn. That doesn't give me any joy to know that during this wealth transfer, there will literally be blood in the streets. There will literally be blood in the streets. There will be people who are going out of business. There will be people who will be foreclosed upon. There will be people who will suffer very painful economic repercussions. And I'm not here to dance on their economic graves. I, like, once again, that gives me no sense of comfort, of joy to know what is coming. You heard me correctly. What is coming? Because these economic savages are just beginning to feast. They haven't really they're, 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 you know what they're doing? They're working on the appetizers. They haven't had the main entree yet. The main entree is coming a little later. And what you're going to see, human nature kicks in because you got these people who are gonna be at these courthouse auctions, at these foreclosure sales, and they're gonna be trying to get this property with little regard that there was a family there was a family in there, husband named Daniel, wife named Susie, two kids, Patrick and Sally, and they lost their house. Upstairs in one of the bedrooms is little Sally's doll. They don't give a damn. They don't care. They don't care. These economic savages, and I'm going to give you confession from an economic savage. Yours truly. When I was in the storage auction business, in the beginning, in the beginning, it was somewhat Melrose. It was somewhat sad that I was making money from the losses of other people. That's what I did for 10 years. I made money because someone lost their stuff. It was a wealth transfer. And I was one of the finest economic savages out there. I was eating economic bones, dining at the plate every day. And in the beginning, you know, it was kind of hard. It was kind of depressing to know because the thing is you clean out the unit and you would see the baby pictures and you would see the, the lifestyle and you would see the family. So instead of unit 177, it was, these people who lost their stuff. But as you can know, I got over that. And that's what these new economic savages, I don't care if they lost a house because the family was murdered. Husband shot in the head, wife shot in the back of the head. Both kids had their throats cut. Once they clean up the blood, the economic savages will not care. We're about to see 
the coldest side of humanity because there's going to, like I said, this brings me no joy. It brings me no joy to know what is coming, what is literally around the corner for a lot of people. Right now, there's someone who lives in the house and they're just barely paying the bills. 24 months from now, they will be homeless or living in the van. 24 months from now. And this is 24 months from now, the economic savages are gonna be eating, they're gonna be throwing parties, they can be throwing pool parties with strippers. They're gonna be eating their butts off. They're gonna eat until they literally roll over and rub their fat tummies because they've ate so much. Because once again, for the wealth transfer to work, and I've said this before, someone's gotta lose something. We're seeing this in the great wealth transfer in the cryptocurrency market. All of the people who bought cryptocurrency at the highs, the, who did they buy from? The people that they bought the cryptocurrency from were part of the wealth transfer because they got that money. And the people who bought and held as it crashed, they lost that money. See, the wealth transfer is some of the coldest game on the planet. I was reading the story of a woman who has stage five cancer, who not only got evicted by the Georgia deputies, she got tased. She was in an apartment. The apartments were renting for 1500 new apartments in that area are renting for $3,000, some serious appreciation. And the police knocked on her door. She didn't answer and they, the apartment complex personnel broke down the door so the police would not have to be charged with destruction of property. And they tried to drag her out and she started fighting and cussing and her, her teenage kid was there. And this woman with stage five cancer got tased. Bzzz. She got tased. You're seeing the mechanisms of the great wealth transfer. She with stage five cancer was evicted from her apartment and tased to make way for a tenant who can come in and pay that $3,000 rent. That's the great wealth transfer at work. The great wealth transfer doesn't care if you have cancer doesn't care if you're going through a divorce, doesn't care if your mama died, doesn't care if your grandparents were killed by a home invasion, doesn't care. Cause see, what you're seeing with the great wealth transfer is the raw naked marketplace. And the raw naked marketplace has no feelings. If you're an online merchant, and you have people who have ordered stuff from you and then your mother dies, guess what? They're gonna say, I am so sorry to hear that your mother died, but where's my stuff? That's the raw naked marketplace. It doesn't care. No feelings, no emotion. And this is why we're gonna see some of the largest wealth transfer numbers we've ever seen. And this wealth transfer would be built, be built upon the bodies and the bloods of people. Let me say this again. The economic savages are going to be chewing on the bones of their fellow men. And it's going to be nasty. It's going to be extremely nasty. It's going to be ridiculous. It's going to be heart wrenching to watch this stuff go down. It's going to be devastating for, and depending on what side of the wealth transfer you're on, because when I was in the storage auction business, 
I had to make a recollection of myself. It's like, if I don't do it, someone else is going to do it. Which was true. It wasn't just me trying to make myself feel better, but it was true. If I didn't buy that storage unit, there was literally 30 other people behind me who would. And in time, I became cold and calculating. Like if the family was there to defend their possessions, at one point I wouldn't bid because I didn't want to deal with that family. And as I got more hardened, as I became an economic savage, I didn't really care. I would buy their unit, slam it down, put my lock on it and walk off and say, your pictures and stuff will be in the office within two days. Very, very cold. And I kind of look back upon the way that I used to be. And I realized I was extremely cold, uncaring, and unfazed, totally unfazed at the economic carnage that benefited me and my partner. Because I look back at who I used to be and I am no longer that person. But there are a bunch of economic savages out there who will buy those storage units and not give a second thought to the people who lost their possessions. And like I said, the best storage units, the best examples of wealth transfers are rooted in tragedy. I remember buying this unit, it was a threefer. And fortunately for me that day, I didn't really buy that much and I had my whole bankroll on me because damn near, it took almost, I, th I think I had 10,000 on me, it took, it took nine to get those three units. They were three 10 by 30s, full from the rooter to the tooth. I spent $9,000, right? One unit, halfway through one unit, I got $12,000 and I had two and a half more units to go. This guy was a developer. He built the equitable building and some other stuff because his whole life was in there. And this guy died from cancer. And the reason that his units went up is he had no one that they could contact to pay the bill complete, um, it was an era because I'm quite sure this guy, cause this stuff came out of one house, three storage, three storage units, that much stuff. This came out of one house. The guy lived in a mansion. So due to a failure to have a next of kin, cause he rented these places and he didn't have anyone for them to contact and they went up to auction. So I found this guy and I went and I found this obituary. And I found out he had like eight children and there was some, some serious pictures in the, in the unit. I mean, maybe enough pictures to fill up, um, five by 10 storage unit by themselves. So I found this obituary and I contacted his people and I told them what had happened. And if they wanted the pictures, I would bring the pictures to them. So um, one of his daughters responded and I'm driving and they live in a beautiful house up in uh, Roswell. So I go there and, and knock on the door. She comes out, she's very nice and everything. And I start moving because I literally had crates of pictures and I start bringing out the pictures and one of the first boxes I bring out, it was a picture and the photo album just kind of flew open because it was a little windy. And she's like, oh my God, I remember that day. And it was a picture of her and her brothers. And, you know, I've just, you know, I was like, you know, tell me some more about this guy. And then, you know, essentially, if the family had known, they had plenty of money. They had plenty of money. See, this guy made an error. Because, you know, when I was telling them uh, what happened, she's like, 
any one of us could have saved that stuff. And I was like, well, most of it's gone because I sold it and everything. And this, you know, not like the, I kept the pictures because, uh, you know, it, I made so much money off that unit. I spent 9,000 and I did close to $80,000 in profit. So, you know, it was no big problem to hang on to the pictures. But I remember just looking at her and then her little kids come out and everything. And if her, if his family had known what he had in that storage unit, they could have rescued that stuff easily, easily. Two of his kids were doctors. So it wasn't that there wasn't money in the family. There was no communication with the family because he left that information off of the rental agreement. Let me see. And I, I've saw this over and over and over again. The best units I got were rooted in tragedy and loss. There, there was just over and over and over this reoccurring theme of loss and tragedy and cancer and death and all, all in all. And this is what's going to happen during this great wealth transfer. Some of the biggest beneficiaries, like right now, Voyager, a cryptocurrency uh, exchange went bankrupt. Celsius, a cryptocurrency exchange went ba bankrupt. But the owners, the owners have not filed personal bankruptcy. They have filed corporate bankruptcy, which means that they have, they're sitting on millions and millions of dollars. Do you think the owners of these exchanges are in any hurry to make the people who lost all their money whole? No, 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 no. Funny thing. If you know about the Bernie Madoff story, and it, this is once again rooted in tragedy. Um, both his sons died and they were in agreement with the feds because Bernie had left them a lot of money in a trust. And once again, you know, Omni and the Hellcat, if Omni and the Hellcat had sophisticated financial advisors to guide him, he could have put all of that money into trust funds for his children and the feds couldn't have touched it. Because see, at that point, once the money is in the trust, it is no longer the own, in the ownership of the trustee. The trust owns the money. And I've looked at this and once again, this is how people who have scammed millions and gone to jail and the feds could not get the money because they put the money in a trust fund for family members. And like you said, would you do two years for 18 million? And I have to ask myself, for me, the answer would be like, hell no. You know why? Because I can make 18 million out here. But what if you couldn't? And I had to ask myself, I had to go back to when I was desperate and when I was hungry. When I was in that position, I probably would have took the two years for 18 million. Easy. Two years for 18 million. Now I wouldn't even, no, 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 no. I wouldn't even do a day. You, you can't get me going to jail. But once again, I'm in a different position. I'm in a very different position. Like these little jokes, like uh, these, these things of, Hey, you know, $50,000 for dinner with, or you know, $500,000 for dinner with Jay-Z. Give me the 500,000. Give me the 500,000. I'm in a very different position. And I was sitting here kind of thinking of the economic carnage that's coming. Cause right now the economic savages, they're just dining on the appetizers, appetizers. We haven't got to the main course yet. And I'm thinking, where am I going to participate or if I'm going to participate? Because I've been thinking, I've been really, really thinking about it because uh, I see your comments and a lot of people say that everyone that's gotten wealthy has gotten wealthy at the expense of someone else. In my case, that's not true. I have gotten wealthy by enriching other people. And I'm like, do I want to actually participate 
in this wealth transfer where I will be making money off the misery of someone else? That was a really deep question to ask. Cause like I said, I am not the person who was in the storage auction business. I'm no longer that person. And I'm, I'm pretty much saying no, I am not going to participate in the buying of distressed assets. I'm going to leave it alone. Now, I am in a position where I can make that calculation and it's not going to hurt me. I'm not telling you what you should or shouldn't do. I'm telling you what Glendon Cameron's going to do. I am not going to participate in the great wealth transfer on that end. I am going to participate in the great wealth transfer because as the economy melts down, as people start looking for ways to make money. That's how I'm going to participate in the wealth transfer. I'm going to teach people how to make money. I'm going to teach people how to sell businesses and stuff. That's where I'm going to make my money. So I don't have to buy distressed assets on sale because I have my own thing, but you know, just to keep it buck, if I was just an average person with nothing going on, I would probably be trying to figure out how could I get in the wealth transfer for me personally, I'm not going to participate on that end. I am going to benefit from the great, great wealth transfer, but I'm not going to participate by buying distressed assets. I'm not messing with that this time around. I'm just not messing with that. Um, because I know how it feels. Right now, I have nine cars left that I'm trying to sell, right? Those are distressed assets that I am taking a personal hit on because the renters dogged out my cars. I know what the economic, you know, fortunately for me, I could take the hit, you know, because I can absorb that hit. It's like my, my shields, my shields are at a hundred percent. It was like, boom. Nothing happened. I can ex absorb that direct hit because my shields are a hundred percent full capacity. But what if my shields weren't at a hundred percent capacity? What if my shields were at 20% and I took that hit? I would have been blown out the space. I've been blown out the sky. So for me, after all this research, all of the studying I've done, I, Glendon Cameron, is not going to participate from a distressed asset standpoint in a great wealth transfer. I, I'm not. I'm not going to make money off the misery of other people. There will be plenty of folks who will. <laughs> plenty of folks. The line will be wrapped around the building of folks who like on stand in that line to make money off the misery of other people. And I feel privileged to be able to make this ethical stance because of the way that my business is set up because I will make money from the great wealth transfer. I will probably make a lot of money teaching these people with new wealth on how to manage their wealth. So I will make money from the wealth transfer, but I will not participate in the wealth transfer. I will not be dining on any economic bones. I will not be, um, I don't have to do that. Thank God. Thank God. All right. Get in the intellectual property school. Let me just say it. I'm going to teach you guys things that you don't know, things that you can Google because other than Sonny Linaduzieri, Sonny has a course that is teaching part of what I do. It's like $6,000. And a lot of people who have taken the course have been very, very successful, which is why I feel very confident about the intellectual property school because Sonny is just dealing with one aspect. I am dealing with a lot more. I have made a million dollars from writing a book. I have made millions of dollars from online courses and this was using YouTube. I'm going to teach you 
how to do the same thing on a different level. I am not going to make some wild claim that, hey, yeah, you take this course in six months, you'll be making two million a year. That's unlikely. But what is likely is you could be making five to $15,000 12 to 24 months in the future. That's more doable. And that's something I feel pretty secure in saying if you are a completely raw, naked rookie. And one of the things we're going to get ready to do, um, probably next week, I'm going to start having challenges in organic money, which is the school for the intellectual property school. So that's where I'll be answering questions because some stuff went in the other day and I had to answer it. And what we're going to have are live trainings once to twice a week. And I need to say this, this will not be on the weekends anymore. Um, this weekend, I will share some with you. Uh, this weekend, I realized I haven't taken a day off and I can't remember. I could not remember the last time that I took a, a complete full day off. And Saturday and Sunday, I did not step foot in this office. I completely took it off and I feel recharged and energized. So going forward, I'm going to start taking more time off because, you know, I was really working on a lot of stuff. And I just think you really even keep track of not taking days off because, you know, that's just kind of my personality. But I'm going to include rest and relaxation in the course. Because here's the thing. Do you understand that the average online creator only has a five to seven year lifespan? Because they don't take breaks and they don't renew themselves. I've been doing this 15, 14 years, almost three times as long as the average content creator. You want to know why? Because there's a strategy that I'm going to teach you. So go below. It's going to be in the first comment or it'll be in the description and you can go ahead and get your promo codes and get in before July 31st. Go ahead, take action and get into the intellectual property school today.